Alright, um, I put two coats of paint on and uh, they're dry enough to start taking off the tape. So, um, the way I wanted the, the top part of the foregrip here was uh, the OD, but then on a Picatinny rail I wanted to leave just black. Especially if you're going to be taking stuff on and off, it's going to be scratching up all that paint if I painted it. And uh, also I thought the paint might affect how things mount to it. So I covered it up. And I think it'll look pretty cool two-tone. So let's take off the tape and see. And I think that turned out pretty good. Hopefully the rest of the gun looks as nice as that. We'll see. I'm not the greatest painter in the world. Got some runs and sags and stuff. I might sand this down and repaint it, but um, I just taped off that knurled area. And when I painted it, I stood it up like that and sprayed all around it. So I didn't even have to mask the bottom to keep it from getting painted. But that turned out pretty good too. This is what happens when you put masking tape on wet paint. <laughs> Uh, I suck. Anyways, um, don't do that. Because then the tape adhesive uh, delaminates and sticks to your paint and you get a mess. And that's what I have here. That turned out alright. Um, masking on that was really hard to do. Basically there's all these raised areas and recessed areas. I just taped over the whole thing and then cut with an exacto knife the recessed areas out and I end up with these skinny little pieces of taped off areas and I'm not a really good masking doer dude whatever you call it I'm not good at masking so um, I ended up with uh, areas that you know there's overspray and things but anyways it feels good compared to the way it came. Um, it was really slippery and it actually it almost feels skinnier now and I don't know if that's because I, I couldn't get good purchase with my fingers. Um, you know it would like my fingers would slip like that when I grabbed the grip but uh, it feels good now it's real sticky. So oh and <laughs> where gloves you know so you don't get paint all over you saves up on cleanup time all right i told you i would show you how to get this out of that because uh um, there's like a plunger in here that sits inside these recesses at the different positions but at the back you know it slides inside this slot here at the back it clicks against the back here when you're trying to when you even when you have it pulled up like this it clicks against the back and you can't you can't pull the tube out um, so I saw a guy do this and he didn't explain what he was doing he just did it and I was like oh look at that that's cool um, so you've got it um, you're trying to put it back in you know I'll, well, here I'll just do it alright so that's what it looks like it's inside the tube you can adjust it to the different lengths you know all the way to the back and it's even with it pushed it's it's in there um, you just grab this whole thing and pull out you see how it, you can kind of pull it out and pull it out really far and then the tube ah, it's tight but it slides out there you go there's one part of the assembly I am going to show um, these things they're a really tight fit in here and I saw some people struggling with putting them in. I saw another guy. He did it really easy. Excuse me while I change out my tools. All I did was take a screwdriver. I mean, it wasn't really easy, but easier than watching people you know, trying to figure out what to do. And he, uh, he just set it where it belongs. And you take the screwdriver and you 
and just kind of jammed it in there. Okay, so you get it started, make sure it's flat, and then shove it in place like that. You know, it's, it's important to make sure it's flat. If it's uh, crooked at all, you know, kind of in there sideways, it doesn't uh, it doesn't slide down in there at all. But if they're flat like that, see. <laughs> I just made it crooked and it wouldn't go in. Uh, come on. All right. Ah. And if it jams, you can just kind of pry it out. All right. like that. Also, uh, these are 3.30 seconds Allen's. So, just a note. This is probably a no-brainer, but um, when you're putting the foregrip piece on, the there's a notch area in the back. It goes in the back. The flat area goes in the front. Just to let you guys know, you do need to reuse the original screw on the bottom when you're doing reassembly. I wanted to show uh, this new, I don't have the, <laughs> I don't have the pistol grip on yet, so you normally be like this, but anyways, I want to show how this mag release works. Um, seems to work pretty good, let's see if I can do it from back here. It just falls right out. And uh, putting the mag back in, just snaps in, falls out. Alright, earlier I told you that the bolt that goes in here is 5 sixteenths. I was wrong. It is three eighths. So that's what I get for trusting what's written on the wall in the tool room instead of looking at the tool I'm using. But anyways, here is finished product as it is. I might make some changes after I put it into use, but. Um, I liked this when I was playing around with it before I put the stock on, but you'll see uh, right now it runs right into the or the grip on. Sorry, but it runs right into the grip, and I don't know if I like it now because <laughs> there's nothing that sticks out the side to grip onto. You kind of gotta sh shove your finger down behind there, so. But anyways, um, we'll see how it works in real life, and uh, maybe I'll like it after I use it. Maybe I won't. So that's it. Squirrel Hunter turned into a tactical shooter. Kind of a fun project. Fun Patriot out.